Every physics has its own set of terminologies to classify its function. Even lithium ion has its own set of terminologies. There are 12 basic terminologies that we need to study. The first and the foremost is the nominal voltage of the cell. The open circuit voltage of a cell varies throughout the cycle. So, nominal cell voltage corresponds to voltage of almost 50% of capacity. Nominal cell voltage ranges from 2.4 to 3.7 volt. Second come cycle life. So, cycle life corresponds to number of charge and discharge the cell can perform. As the cell are capable of storing energy in them reversibly, each time we discharge and charge them back, we say one cycle has performed. So LFP that is lithium and phosphate has more than 2000 cycles, NMC has almost 1500 cycles. Next is the cell capacity. So cell capacity is the amount of charge a cell can hold when fully charged. It is expressed in ampere hours. Ampere corresponds to the current, R corresponds to the time. So one ampere current says that the cell can give away one ampere for almost one hour. It is an important health indicator of a battery. Coming towards our next terminology, it's the maximum current output. So it denotes the maximum current that can be drawn out of a cell. Typical cell consists of standard, peak and instantaneous current output that we are going to see in the further topics. Next is the internal resistance. Every circuit, every component has internal resistance. Even the cell has its own. So it is the electrical resistance of individual cell expressed in milli ohms. A good cell has a lower internal resistance. Next parameter is the C rate. So a C rate is a conversional parameter defining discharge rate of a cell current per hour. This is mostly related to the maximum current output that the cell can give. So let's say there is a cell of 1 ampere hour and 1C discharge rate, it means it can give 1 ampere per 1 hour. If it is saying 2C discharge rate, it can give 2 ampere current for half an hour. That is the C rating. Coming to the next parameter is the SOC. SOC stands for the state of charge. It is the indication of capacity available in terms of percentage. So let's say 100% corresponds to full energy capacity and 0% corresponds to the lowest energy capacity. And 0 means minimum charge. Next is the energy density. It is a parameter expressing energy capacity per unit weight. So if there is more energy density, it means the lighter and compact the battery pack will be. If it is higher energy density, it will take more volume and more weight. Generally expressed in watt hour per kg. Coming to the cell chemistry. It denotes material composition of anode and cathode. So it is basically a nomenclature that is used to denote which material is used in the manufacturing of the electrodes. Just to give an example, we have LCO, we have LMO, we have LFP, NMC, NCA, LTO. Now what does LCO stands for? It's lithium cobalt oxide. What does LMO stands for? It's lithium manganese oxide. LFP is lithium ion phosphate. LTO is lithium titanate oxide. So it is a way to represent the materials used in shorter forms. As you can see in this graph, so we have plotted different cell chemistries against different parameters. Let's say cost, lifespan, performance, safety, specific power, specific energy. Now you can see the best one is not any single cell. And every cell is like uh, better in some of the other parameters. So let's say LTO has good lifespan, it has good safety parameters, it has good performance but lacks in specific power and it is expensive. Coming to LFP, it has good lifespan, it has good specific power but again it lacks specific energy. And if we see NMC, NMC is showing overall average good characteristics and that is the reason that NMC chemistry is used in most of the electric vehicles and popularly in Tesla. Now coming to the next terminology that is self-discharge. So self-discharge is the capacity loss due to internal leakage. Just to give an example, it is like a leaking tab that loses not a lot but little over a larger span of time. 
so as in case of a tank it loses step by step and the tank becomes empty similarly in a battery pack as over a period of time due to internal resistance the cell get discharged and it should be kept recharged after a particular period of time that is a disadvantage of lithium ion cell now coming to the depth of discharge so dod denotes usable capacity of a battery pack typically we have 80% of dod that means if we have a battery pack of 10 ampere hour we will be using only 8 ampere hour of capacity now how we do this is by limiting our voltage range that we call it as working range of voltage as we can see in the graph so we like exclude the top one and the bottom one and there is a limited 80% that we can use now why we do is just because dod helps out in increasing the cycle life and lowering down the degradation if we use lower dod it will give higher cycle life and lower degradation now the next and the foremost important terminology is the thermal runaway so what is thermal runaway it is the uncontrolled disintegration of a battery from the inside out what does disintegration means it means any type of damage to the cell structure resulting in short circuit lithium ion cells are very sensitive in terms of cell defect excess heating and abusive conditions now what is abusive condition let's say the vehicle crashes let's say it goes an accident let's say the battery pack drops from hand let's say there are swappable battery packs that drops or let's say there is excess heating so these are a various abusive condition that leads into thermal runaway just to give an example in case of electric car undergoes a crash entire force is transferred to the battery pack which results into short circuit and eventually fire now you will be thinking of how short circuit so as we have seen before it is made up of three layers that is anode separator and cathode now the separator insulates anode and cathode but when this deformation takes place separator is unable to insulate anode and cathode and they come together and short circuit takes place which eventually results into fire so this is the thermal runaway concept